Australia was uh, it was amazing, but the weirdest trip I think I've had in a while. <laughs> like, you know, I, honestly, I've traveled a lot, and I always have really good luck with trips. Like, typically, nothing really goes wrong. I can confirm that. Yeah. Like, weirdly, get get lucky on yeah, flights I, like, and all the always, things, right? I've, I just am lucky. God things likes me. Things just work out for you. God, God likes me. He blesses everywhere I go. There and, are so many uh, people that secretly hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> just want to. guy. <laughs> Never had a delayed flight. But, so, the week before I was leaving, I didn't realize that I needed a visa. So then my visa got denied. <laughs> oh, shit. Then the visa literally got approved the day that I left. So I had my first ever international ER visit. Never had to go to the ER on a trip before, but I had to go here. That was a fun story to watch on Instagram. <laughs> ask at Libbeard. Not ask. What you don't understand is the, sh- the spot opened up literally next door. That's a big real. freaking win for the company because it started this show. Beth and Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how loyal you guys are thirsty for some One of the burgeoning men to be the best version. Ask us anything. Welcome to the Beards, men. That is a good question. You know, you got 14 hours let's say a little bit burnt out unmotivated week not their birthday uh, i gotta extend it welcome to the beardsman the show where we talk mock and never walk away from the conversation i am here with the beardsman spencer and mink yo what's up guys i'm spence my name is mink and uh man we started this show because as the founders of live bearded we've had the privilege to have conversations with thousands of dudes over the years it's our favorite thing that we do here and we wanted to bring the conversation to you and talk about the experience of being a man in the wild world we live in today. It's fucking crazy out there. <laughs> <laughs> wild. Wild. Wild West. Wild. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is an Ask Us Anything. Literally, there's nothing off the table. If it's health, wellness, fitness, behind the scenes, live bearded, what it means to be a man, whatever that means to you, ask whatever questions you have. We'll dig if they're good enough yeah. to clarify. Put us on good the enough, spot. Put us on the spot. We'll give you our opinion for whatever it's worth. And Jared, if they have any questions, uh, how are they going to get them to us? You can submit your questions by emailing us at ask at livebearded.com, or you can comment them below, and that's how we will find them. You, you know go. what? Up. I think I just remembered something that we haven't been doing. Did you say where we talk mock I didn't and never say it, walk away? I didn't say it in episode nine. Oh. I caught myself halfway through. That's okay. Wow. And this I was is like, the show ADD where brain. we talk mock and never walk away from the conversation. That's Whoa, right. That's what we do. You can ask us anything you want, and we'll talk. We'll Throw mock. Up. I said but it for this one, though. We won't walk away from the conversation. But we you? said it, yeah, but we, now we said it twice to make up yeah, for yeah. episode yeah. We forgot about the last for one. Sure. We made up for the last one. So, yeah. We're even now. It's yeah. fine. Perfect. How yep. you guys doing? Good. Great. What's, doing good. <laughs> what's new in the world today for you guys? Jared, what, what have you been going? What you been doing? <laughs> you, want me, you want to talk about that? <laughs> you yeah. want to talk about that? <laughs> I was going to ask you how, how down, down under was. Oh, Mink yeah. just got back from an awesome trip in oh, Australia. Oh, that's way more interesting than so, my thing. I mean, yeah. I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah. I, I was going to talk about that laptop thing. Uh, but <laughs> Oh, well, we'll come, we'll come, we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. like a TBD. We want to see where that story goes. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll come back sure. to that. Yeah. Australia was, uh, it was amazing, but the weirdest trip I think I've had in a while. <laughs> like, you know, I, honestly, I've traveled a lot, and I always have really good luck with trips. Like, typically, nothing really goes wrong. I can confirm that. Yeah. Like, weirdly, get get lucky on yeah. flights I, like, and all the things, always, right? I very yeah. rarely... I've been to 40 countries, guys. I've I've traveled all around the world. I spent seven years living in Airbnbs and vacation rentals, literally no home, on the road, full-time. So when I tell you I've flown, like, hundreds of thousands of miles at this point, uh, no joke. And very rarely do I have a canceled flight or a lost baggage or anything. Everywhere I go, I feel like the weather's always great. Like... I just am lucky. God Things likes just me. just work out for you. God, God likes me. He blesses everywhere I go. There are and, so many uh, people that secretly hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> just want to. <laughs> Never had a delayed flight. But, so like the, the, the week before I was leaving, I didn't realize that I needed a visa. So then my visa got denied. <laughs> oh, shit. Then the visa literally got approved the day that I left. Like Regina, my assistant, is like, it came back like <laughs> you can go. five hours before my flight. So I was like, all right, sweet. So it already started like a little crazy. Then a fucking cyclone hits where I'm supposed to go. Um, it just misses the island that I was going to be on. But I get there. The weather's all crazy. Um, I The first island that I was on was stormy for five days straight. The day that I left... The five-day forecast was all sun. Cleared and I'm out. like, okay, cool. So then I look at the five-day forecast of where I'm going, all rain. It moved there. It literally just, like, <laughs> followed me. It's like, where's Mink going? So all right, I let's was, go fuck him was, up over here. I was <laughs> in Australia for two and a half weeks. I had my first ever international ER visit. Never yeah. had to go to the ER on a trip before, but I had to go here. That was a fun story um, to watch on Instagram. <laughs> there was, like, two and a half days of sun in my Down Under trip. And now I went to Australia for Christmas because it's their summer. Yeah. So I was thinking, I'm going to spend all my time on the beach. I'm going to go snorkeling and diving in the reef i'm gonna have like just a surf beach vibe and i pretty much just watched it rain the whole time um but honestly like 
it was really cool. I had this moment when I was there and I was like finding myself get frustrated and I just had to check myself. And one of the things I remind myself is like, Anthony, sometimes you just have to trade your expectations for appreciation. Like you're in fucking Australia, bro. And, um, I just like embraced the rain. I went to the ER. I embraced like the issue with that. Um, it was, it was awesome. I met some really crazy, uh, really incredible people and more than anything, I just really fell in love with the country. So my first trip was like a little bit different than I thought. So I can't wait to go back. It'll but be there. Tell people why you were in yeah, the ER. I want to hear what the fuck no one, attacked you. Yeah, I, I, don't get the, yeah. I don't think I get the full story. So I walked out of a coffee shop. It's like evening time, right? Um, and this bug flies right into my fucking eye. And I'm not talking about like an average like gnat or little bug. Like it was like this big... <laughs> Like hard bug. Australian bug. Yeah. Fucking flies into my eye. And as soon as it hits my eye, my eye literally starts burning. And I was like, oh fuck. I'm like trying to get it out. And, and then I like, I got like I turned around and I went right back into the coffee shop because I knew they had a bathroom. I went straight to the bathroom. My eye is literally burning. I've never oh, experienced shit. my eye like searing burning. I pulled down my eyelid in the mirror, and the bug is literally crawling underneath my eyelid, trying to like dig into uh, my eye. Uh. Now I'm like, oh fuck. And so I turn on the water and I'm just like, just putting all this water in my fucking eye, trying to wash it out. I'm, I got water all over me. I'm like, I don't even care. It's burning and I'm trying to get this fucking thing out. Because in my head, this yeah. is like some killer Australian Penetrate fucking bug. Into your fucking that's brain. like going to dig its way into that's my going eye. going to lay its eggs in your brain. Yeah, this is exactly what I was going through. So I get oh, it out. Gross. And I get it out and I'm like trying to wash my eye out, but it's still just burning. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. And I'm looking and there's nothing still in there. So anyways, I go straight home. I get in the shower and I take like warm water with the shower head and I'm like washing my eye, holding my eye, trying to like clean it out, make Wash sure there's it. nothing yeah. in there. I, it hurts, whatever. I'm like, it'll be fine. I go to bed. I wake up at like 2.30 in the morning. My eye is swollen shut. I have this white mucus oh. all down the side of my face and my eye is burning. And I was like... I'm going to lose my eye. <laughs> I came all the way to Australia. It's raining every day. I threw out my back. Now my eye's going. Like, And I was like, dude, do I go to the emergency room? I've literally never been to the emergency room before. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going. And I just like went to the emergency room. They put some solution in my eye, Like looked at Crazy it that, under yeah. a, a microscope. He's like, well, I got some good news for you. Uh, you're, gonna, you're not going to lose your eye. And uh, the, the bad news is it's scratched up really bad. And he's like, it'll probably be really sore and irritated for like maybe five or six days, maybe a week. Gave me some solution. <laughs> he's like, put this drop in your eye every, every two hours for the next week. You don't have to do it when you're sleeping, but when you're awake, every two hours. And uh, it started to heal up over time, but my eye was like completely red and bloodshot for like three days. Um, so yeah, it was it was an adventure down under for sure. Dude, yeah. you see all those videos and they joke about all the things in Australia that can kill you. Yeah, and that literally experienced it on her first <laughs> trip from five. Just a bug, dude. I Just literally a bug. like I was staying in this Airbnb, and it was in like a like a wooded jungle area, which was really cool overlooking the beach. And I walk out my first day. And I'm walking, and I look, and there's this giant spider web with a spider that is, like, three inches in diameter. Like, it's huge. And I'm looking at this thing. It's kind of discolored. And then there was a landscaper over here. I'm like, hey, bro, what is this? He's like, ah, oh, mate, that one's no good, mate. That one's no good. Stay away from that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, why don't you fucking kill the yeah. thing, you know? He's like, they're everywhere. Yeah. Nothing you can do, yeah. you know? And then I met this girl while I was over there. And I, uh, she was like, oh, I have a farm, and we've got chickens and cows and this whole thing. And so I fo started following her on social media. And she posts this video of a python crawls inside the chicken cage and eats one of the baby chicks. <laughs> right? <laughs> the reason why she posted it is the python was stuck in the cage because the baby chick was so big, so it couldn't it. climb back out of <laughs> yeah. the chicken cage. And she had this video where she's like, trying to pull the python out but it won't fit and the python's trying to fucking bite her and i'm like what are you doing just kill the fucking snake and her response was like oh just the poor thing was hungry like there's no reason to kill it it just i just needed to get it out of the <laughs> nah. just like a normal day in <laughs> yeah. the life no nah. like, yeah these people are different down here <laughs> I respect it, I admire it, and I can't wait to go back. Uh, that's awesome. Maybe they have like an unspoken law with it because everything is trying to kill you in Australia. Yeah. Don't kill it. Yeah, we'll don't kill it, back. and we won't kill you. Yeah. But we're going to eat your baby chicks. And all yeah. the tourists. Yeah, and all the tourists. <laughs> no, I was, I was uh, so right next to where I was staying, there, I stayed in this place called Noosa. I stayed there for a week for Christmas. And there's this really beautiful national park right next door. And what was really cool 
is, you know, if there's like a beautiful boardwalk along a beach, like this one went on for miles through the national park. And I'm talking like they had these beautiful decks built out over like a cliff and you like walk around. It was awesome. Sweet. And there's people like hiking and running and whatnot. And so I see this couple and uh, they were trying to take a selfie. And I was like, hey, guys, you want me to take a picture for you? So I take a picture of them and they're like, oh, where are you from? I'm like from America. And they're like, have you ever been here before? No. And they're like, oh, have you seen any koalas? I was like, no. They're like, well, they're in the trees up here, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, also, we just passed a giant python. The python was eating a possum. And I was like, <laughs> just like on the trail? And they're like, well, just like in the bushes. But if you, you might still see it if you go there. I'm thinking, how big is this fucking python? And it's eating a possum. And you're just like, oh, look, the python is eating the possum. <laughs> Right next to the fucking hiking trail? Yep. I was like, yeah, I think I'm not cut out for all this right now. I'm, I'm not a fan of snakes or spiders. Call me a bitch if you will. That's fine. But spiders and snakes are not my thing. I could handle snakes. Spiders, That that's where I... Anything bug related, I'm out. No go? I'm, uh, Dude, I went on a, a fucking hike, right? And uh, I look down on my leg, and I have a fucking leech attached Ew. to my ankle. Ew. I'm like, what the fuck? I kick it off and it's like, like spinning all around. It's yeah. just, it's just. It's true what it's they say. Rugged right? down yeah, there, bro. Rugged. But I, I love it. I can't wait to go back. It Memorable was, for sure. Yeah. Again, like I thought I was going to have a sunny, chill beach vibe and I got the exact opposite. I got like a chaotic, raining ER adventure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, oftentimes I think those are the most memorable to your memorable. point. The most, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, Lean oftentimes... Into it. You, you yeah. can't control all those things, right? Yeah. You're not going to change the weather. So you can yeah. either sit and sulk and bitch about it, or you can make the best of it and try to, you know, <laughs> turn Yeah, it. everything caught up to you, though. Like, all the good yeah. karma that you yeah. had, you Compile got all the bad weeks. stuff. Yep. So now you are level with yeah. everyone. Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> so we were at a conference. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You put your name in a hat. Oh. And oh, yeah. you won a brand new MacBook Pro. I did. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. I did. It was, yeah. it was great. Uh... I already have a lot of laptops and computers that I use at home, though. So I was like, I don't really need this. Maybe I can like put it on Facebook Marketplace and see if someone, you know, wants to buy it for like, you know, a discounted price. It's brand new, still in the box and everything. Score. So I know like it's easily worth a thousand dollars or something. So I just list it, and some guy messages me. He's like, Hey, are you open to trades? I'm like. What do you have? <laughs> Let's see what it is. Like, I'm still going to come out on top no matter what, maybe. Uh, but he's offering up a, a motorcycle <laughs> for it. And, like, I looked it up, and I'm like, it retails for, like, 35 grand. And I'm like. 3,500? No, 35, 35 grand. There's that math 35, thing again. $35,000. dollars $35, for this brand new motorcycle. And, yeah, exactly. I was, I'm skeptical still. And I don't know anything about motors, so I'm researching. Be. Yeah. <laughs> so right. I ask him, yeah, or, or do you want to know what motorcycle it no, is? No, I'm just now continuing. Where, where continue. did the motorcycle come from? Uh, it's it, it's from Mexico. And this is on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Okay. The guy's legitimate from what I can tell. Like, yeah. he's been on Facebook for over a decade. Okay. Yeah. He's got at least a, a few hundred friends, so he doesn't look super scammy. So just to, just to clarify for the audience... So a guy on Facebook Marketplace offered you a motorcycle that retails at $35,000 for a MacBook that you can buy for 1000 and the motorcycle is from Mexico, but it's in the United States. And he bought it from auction, and he has all the papers for it, <laughs> and it has 235 miles on it. <laughs> so I mean, I'm either, like, going... I, I don't know how this is. Do you ride is. motorcycles? No, I don't. <laughs> which is why I'm just like, I don't know enough but about motorcycles. But I get the motorcycle, then I could trade for a car, which you, you do trade, drive. Yeah, you trade keep trading up. up. Yeah, keep yeah. trading up. Yeah. So it's Guys, like, what do you think? What do you post think? a picture. Yeah, I'm curious to see a in picture the video, In this video, yeah. post a picture of the motorcycle. So as we're talking about it, the audience can see it. And guys, give us a comment. Should JR do this trade and get this motorcycle? Should or I? is he getting <laughs> scammed and there's some bullshit about to take place? Throw a comment up. Let us know your thoughts. Couple For things. you motorcycle people out there, it's a 2022 Italica RC200. I don't know what that means in motorcycle speak, but when I <laughs> typed it online, it's apparently a really popular motorcycle in Mexico. Mm. So. And it could be yours. It, it could be mine. I might trade for, for a it. laptop. I'm supposed to get back to him. This it might night. be worth doing the deal or just, just for the story. It might be. <laughs> it's in Coolidge. I have to rent a U-Haul because there's no way I'm going to be able to try the motorcycle Dude, you back. know what you should do? What? This is fucking... So you got to think strategic, bro. Okay. Okay, so here's the strategy. You turn around and list that motorcycle. 
for sale before you even get it. Okay, oh, so you, so then, you do it on consignment. So I get it lined up. So you sell it before you even get it. You go exchange it, and then you turn around and resell it. Now you just walk away straight with the cash, so you have no risk. Yeah, yeah. You get a committed buyer. I mean, that's that's what I want to do. Or or I keep trading up. I like your idea more though, because I like the idea of just getting <laughs> cash. The cash. Is nice. <laughs> cash is nice. Cash is king. No, you can go for you, okay. So yeah, you could go to cash, get the thirty five hundred or whatever he pays you for. Let's say he pays you thirty five hundred US. You're like, okay, cool. But then you could go buy something with that, and then try to trade. You know what I mean? Like you could keep it, keep going. it going. Yeah, you could. See you how could big trade you for can cash, snowball this free going. laptop. Yeah, yeah, all from a free laptop. All right, stay Let's, tuned, guys. Stay tuned <laughs> for the story to see what happens. All right, what questions we got today? Yeah, let's get to the community, right? All right. So, uh, the first question we have is, when did you decide to grow a beard? Were you still living at home? Did your dad call you an FM radio listening, long-haired, dope-smoking hippie? This question uh, comes he... from Dino. Wow. This sounds D very specific. <laughs> Dino, Did he I... call you a long-haired, smoke... What? Long -haired, dope-smoking hippie. So it sounds like Dino got may have gotten he grew his beard. It some, sounds like as soon as he got out of his house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, when did I first grow my beard? I mean, really I think as as soon as I could, right? Like I couldn't grow it in high school, had a little mustache. And then in college got a little stubble, but I didn't didn't I don't think I could even grow a full beard till I was almost 30. My dad hated facial hair. Yeah. Hated it. Why? I, Gillette, he's I don't part know. of he just grew Gillette, up in that generation. Yeah. Generation, yeah, that generation I thing. I would grow out my stubble though. Like I had some, like it wasn't, it wasn't a full beard, but like I had some good coverage yeah. in high school, and like you know, it would grow out to be a little stubbly. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, it yeah. looked good. Did you? This is a totally random but, question, but did you guys ever, when you were like sixteen to twenty years old, wonder like, what will I look like one day when I get older, and like, will I be able to grow a great beard, or will I like, how will I look? Yes, yeah. but I thought about being taller. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Will I ever get taller? <laughs> Will I ever get taller? No, no, no I won't. <laughs> no. Yeah, I, I, think every, I think every guy probably goes through that to some degree. For yeah. sure, I definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the question, when did I first grow my beard? I think it was probably not until I was like late 20s, the first time I could really grow a full beard. And I kept it tight for a number of years. I was probably mid-20s, mid kept it tight, kind of the corporate Kind of lined it up. I definitely lined it too high on my jawline. I didn't really yeah. know what I was doing. You know, a little chin strap looking thing. I did that for a little while. It's pretty pretty hideous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mine was like always a rebellious kind of thing. High yeah. school, I was never allowed to go past a certain length because yeah. dad would get really upset. Yeah. And then go to college. I go to BYU Idaho where you're not allowed to have facial hair, except for a mustache, which is a really weird rule. I don't no understand. beard at all, but mustache is allowable. Yeah. It's yeah. Like the, it's allowable. Okay. But I did get a beard card. Which I was just me going to the doctor and being like, hey, could you write a card for like pseudo funiculitis on my neck so then I don't have to shave? So I could have like, nice I couldn't even around. have as much as you. I could have half of what you had at BYU. Just to cover the skin? Yeah. For your medical yeah. quote condition? Yeah, the medical quote. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, as soon as I graduated though, boom, 20, yeah. 26, nice. full beard. I like it. Yeah, I don't think I could grow like a real good thick beard until post 30 either. Yeah. I know I had like just a little bit of stubble for a while. Um, that was trying, I was trying to rock that look, but it didn't really look that great in my opinion. But yeah, yeah. I think, uh, really what prompted me to grow out the beard was live bearded. Yeah. You know, I know you had your beard, you have already grown it out and you came up with the idea of live bearded as you were trying to find grooming products. Yep. And since we decided to partner, I was like, well, you'll be the beard guy and I'm just going to keep my stubble and like, cause I didn't, you know, I didn't think I could grow a beard honestly. Yeah. And then. You know, I have this problem where, like, I feel like I need to like use the products that we sell, and I need to be authentic with like what I we're mean, doing. And it's, it's true. So, it's like, important. three months in, we were living in Thailand. I was like, I just have to see if I can grow a beard, and so I just started letting it grow out a little bit and a little bit longer and a little bit longer, and then here we are today. Here we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know that I ever would have grown it. I mean, maybe I can't make that decision, but I genuinely think a lot of guys think they can't grow a beard, and it really just comes down to giving yourself the time to let it grow. It's it's always shocking how much it progresses once you get like if you have thin spots right as it grows longer it fills in those thin areas and so it can look it does typically look significantly different than what you anticipate yeah. it to and the only way to really know is to do it give it a mm -hmm. shot put the razor down for three months four months see what it looks like and then I also just so it's worth saying rock whatever beard style you want right like you've gone through different stages where you had it long and you hated it and you found it where you it's short it gives you confidence you love it and that's at the end of the day that's what matters most so yeah. so find the style that works for you if long short goatee only, whatever gives yeah. you confidence, 
That's what you should grow. I think everyone always goes through like that awkward beard phase too when they first start because you don't know what it looks like on your face yeah. yet. You're always experimenting. Yeah. It's like, how does this look? So like, I think people should plan for like a year of just like yeah. finding themselves. <laughs> well, that's what we're here for, right? Like we create a lot of grooming educational content because when you're a guy growing a beard for the first time, it's fucking weird. You see yourself change in the mirror every single day. Like you don't know where to trim, what to do. And as most guys, they don't like go ask their buddies like, hey man, like give me some yeah. advice on this thing. So. You learn about cowlicks that you have that just like go in opposite directions. Yeah. Uh, you wake up in the morning with it, like all going one direction, like, oh, how do I get it down? A little bit of product. I remember we had this customer once upon a time who said, uh, he had a calic on the side and he would do his beard in the morning. And the only way he get it to lay down was to lay his face down on like, on like a pillow (laughs) for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, wait, you lay your face down on a pillow every day for 10 minutes. He's like, dude, it's the only way I can get the calic to go down. (laughs) That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. There's other ways to do it. Yeah. Beards are interesting, man. Live oh, yeah. bearded. Live, Live bearded. bearded. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Thanks for the question, Dino. I thanks, think Dino. I think we got him covered. Dino, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> Go to livebearded.com. Buy all the shit. It's amazing. We'll mm-hmm. take care. And of Dino, you. if someone's giving you shit and saying you look homeless, man, it's fucking rock. What gives it's, you comments? Don't worry bro. about it yet. It's it, forget them. Shrug them off. If you're happy, that's all that matters. Right. <laughs> all right. Our next question comes from uh, Jerry Z. Jerry asked, Jerry. help. I have a full long beard, but hate my mustache. I need someone to tell the tricks of getting an awesome mustache to compliment my beard. I love to dress as Santa, and this is my only issue. So, guy that dresses up as Santa is not a huge fan of his mustache and how it works. I could understand that frustration. Your mustache has come a long way. Yeah, yeah, but I, so I always have to like trim it on the upper lip there. Yeah. Because it's just like, you always are like biting into it. But my, it ends up happening with uh it looks a little bit like yours. The outside edges grow really long, but this always gets really short. Yeah. So I kind of have like the same issue. I'm not a huge fan of my mustache. I kind of want to chop off the edges and go back to something a little more uniform like Ming's over cleaner. here. My simple advice, there's some some trimming techniques. We've got tons of video content on this. Happy to direct that. We can post some links up or something. There's a lot of uh uh instructional how-tos that we have on our channel. So I'd say go down that rabbit hole. We can kind of show you, show you some tips and tricks on what to do. But it's yeah. all a little trimming technique. See, you can keep it. You can actually trim it shorter here to get rid of those and let those grow longer. Yeah, it, I guess. I guess the real thing is like, why do you hate your mustache? Is it because it touches your lip? If it touches yeah. your lip, I think that scissor technique of like yeah. just taking scissors and just like going up and just trimming it around it, yeah. getting it off there, so you're not biting. And guys, it. this is if, if you have a, a specific question like this, the easiest way for us to help you is shoot us an email support at livebearded.com. Like we yeah. built Live Bearded around serving serving you guys and going above and beyond to help with all these types of questions. We love getting feedback. Send us a picture of your actual mustache, and we can give you direct one on one tips and, and speak to you directly. Yeah, Jerry, send us a picture of your mustache. Spencer will come out and trim it for you. That's right. Wherever you are. <laughs> this next question comes from Ethan O. What's up, Ethan? What is your favorite objectively bad movie? He says objectively, objectively bad. bad. So that I, would be like a movie that people are like, that movie sucks, but you secretly love it? Yeah. like kind of I, I think you could look at it as like a guilty pleasure guilty or pleasure. a movie that's collectively viewed as bad, but like, you know, something like that. You're the movie guy. I, I'll kick it off for you. I'll give you guys some time to think. There's okay. a movie... I, I want to say it's Val Kilmer's first movie that he ever did. Like, it was his big break movie. It's called Top Secret, and it's like a prop comedy movie. And I don't know if it's necessarily bad, but it's it's not like a great work of cinema. Okay. It's just super funny and goofy and over the top. And to, like, give people an idea of what kind of movie, like, a prop movie is, it's every scene is a joke in itself. Like, you try to just cram as many things into it. Uh, he's Val Kilmer plays this music artist that's going to tour East Germany, and it's during uh, the, the Berlin Wall is still up, so mm-hmm. like everyone's like really just like there's still some kind of Nazis around there. A little, little tension going on. Yeah, a lot of tension. But he's a rock star. He's coming over to do a concert in East Germany, and that's the first time they've led an American rock star into their country. Okay, so that's where all the comedy is going to be coming from. He's riding a train. And as he's on the train and things are going by, a tree moves along really fast alongside the window and a guy runs up and grabs on the tree. And everything in the background is moving super fast, but the tree's traveling alongside the train. And 
It's just meant to be a goofy joke. It's just a tree in the background. It's just a background <laughs> joke. Another scene is like there's a librarian that's got this <coughs> uh, magnifying glass held up to his eye, and it's making his eye huge. It's just enormous. And when he pulls it down, his eye is still enormous. <laughs> like it's the same size as it was under the magnifying glass. There wasn't magnification. He just looks like it's a freak. Just a piece of glass. Yeah, but <laughs> the movie's called Top Secret, and it is just a movie about. Fitting in as many ridiculous jokes as possible at the expense. And have you watched of the story. this movie multiple times? Yes, I love it. It <laughs> is so funny. It is a great movie. If you have not seen Top Secret, you should watch it. There I don't know what it. streaming service it's on, but if you type it in, I bet it's out there somewhere. I'm struggling to come up with something because there's a lot of movies that maybe people think are cheesy or bad, or I'm like, ah, oh, it wasn't bad, you know. But I don't know that I rewatch. Bad yeah. movies over I, and over. I, when, you, when the question came out, the first thing that came to mind for me was Fast and the Furious. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like yeah, obje- that, that, that's, obje- that's pretty bad. Really bad. <laughs> Super cheesy, but you're sucked in yeah. and like so bought into I mean, the story. I remember, yeah. you know, like when did the first one come out? In 2000 or something? Oh yeah, it, it was 2000, like, 2001. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. So it was cool back then. And ago. what's crazy is like the series has gotten so big. I mean, there's fucking ten of them, you know. Yeah. So I've seen all ten of them. Yeah. So objectively speaking, they're bad. Yeah, yeah. But, but, watched, but I will say objectively, the later ones are bad. Personally, I think yeah. the first the first handful were good, and they just got more and more and more extreme. But it got to bad. a point where it was really good. ridiculous. Yeah, the to last the stunts one, they pull, you're like, it's fucking so unrealistic. The last one was I, it was tough to watch. Yeah, <laughs> but we still. Watched but you it. don't watch Fast and Furious <laughs> for realism. Yeah, no. But there is like that's uh, a good series. That's Dominic a good example. T- it's all about family. <laughs> when you have family, you can ride your car off a cliff <laughs> and still survive. You can swing from a. Poles, or <laughs> I don't know. Oh. You can jump from building to building. Yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. drive from the tallest building in the world to the other the tallest, tallest building in the world, crashing through everything. <laughs> if you have family. That series went way longer than I ever thought it would. Yeah. I don't know if. Yeah. I, I don't think. I think as long as you're entertained, I don't think there's such thing as a bad movie. Because if the movie if makes you laugh. The point of the movie is to entertain you, yeah. make you laugh. Yeah, and okay. even if it's bad, like movies like The Room. Yeah, have you guys like seen clips of that? No. Uh, so you should eh, actually don't just type The Room on YouTube and watch those clips. Yeah, it's a really bad movie, <laughs> and the acting's awful. There's a moment and it's like, I did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi, Mark. And it's just like the <laughs> the emotional dynamics going yeah. across are just. <laughs> I it's feel like so there's weird. a lot of. I just as we're talking it out. There's this series on Netflix. I don't even know if it's a Netflix series, but I feel like there's movies that are created on Netflix called they're called Sniper. And okay. so it's like a series of like sniper military oh, movies okay. in like a section. Okay, and I it has it. like the same guys in it, and they're different like missions. And they're the movie is objectively very bad, but every time I see it, it's like kind of a military sniper like CIA type okay. show. And you like those movies, yeah? I like yeah, those yeah. types of movies. Yeah. And if there's nothing else to watch, I'm like, oh, I'll watch it. And the new one just came out, and it's it's bad. But I was like, so you guys, when you're looking you like for something it. like that, you understand. do you guys go to new movies or shows or fall back to rewatching movies that you know you like? If you're scrolling, you're like, hey, I want to unwind it <gasps> Sunday afternoon or evening. Yeah. Are you looking to go watch another show or movie that you know you're going to like? Or is it like, I'll gamble on this Yeah, it's interesting. Video. I feel like more often than not, I rewatched something that I liked from a long time ago. Yeah. So like I got sucked back into watching Whole High Five O. Okay. Because there was like <laughs> yeah. nothing else that I wanted to download for my fucking fifteen hour the flight to Australia. And, stuff, yeah. and so I was like, well, I can't find anything new. And then I was like, oh, so I downloaded that and I downloaded Suits. Okay. And I've Suits. seen seen both of those series. So I just yeah. like watched that off and on. And, yeah. and I chose that versus some other bullshit that I don't know about. Yeah. That's fair. That's interesting that you you pick suits. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pegged you for suits, dude. I love it. It is an entertaining show though. Yeah, we yeah. just started watching it. Oh, we're a little late. We're it. late to everything because we're like we don't watch in real time. We're like let's get feedback from oh. everyone to where it's like you haven't watched suits, you have to watch suits. It's like okay, I was late to it. I heard too. that twenty times, so it's yeah. like we'll we'll finally watch it. It's, yeah. it's pretty good though. <laughs> <laughs> I skipped the last season. I, I stopped caring about it at that. point. It's definitely falling off. We're at like season three, four or something. You can see it's there's trailing a few shows a like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like Scrubs too. Did you guys ever watch Scrubs? Didn't get it out. No. Yeah, no. I just don't watch the last season of that one. It's not the same show. <laughs> Billions though, oh, there's a good show. I did like I did like Billions. What was seen bi- what's Billions? Billions? Have you seen Yellowstone? Yeah. Okay, so I feel like Billions is like Yellowstone for Wall Street. It like has that edgy drama, a lot of like not backstabbing, <laughs> but like yeah, it's the the, the drama. The the 
storyline is billionaire hedge fund manager, main character, his like team of biz- his business, and then his enemy. And there's like there's this like weird like the attorney general of New York is trying to sue him for like insider trading and take him down because he's this wealthy billionaire that can do whatever he wants. And so there's kind of like class warfare. There's like him, ver- you know, like the rich versus the poor. There's the business aspect of it where he's like deal making and stuff. Yeah. 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 He's got, you know, he's a billionaire. So he's got his fixers and he's got like a fixer that takes care of things on this and yeah. a, his like attorney that takes. And so he's just like, it's very interesting if you like business. It's a good show. Sounds fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not, it's a lot of drama and just like, it's the, super the, entertaining. Literally yeah. The, the I entire, get you. That's practical business. The entire series opens up the very first scene in the very first episode is this dude like dominatrix style, oh, like yeah. ball chain and gags. <laughs> and this woman like steps her high heel on his chest and then all of a sudden starts pissing on his chest. What the, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? You're like, what the shit is this, right? And then it just like, yeah, it's it's pretty gnarly. It's like, what is this? Oh, this this is <laughs> terrible. Mm. <laughs> it's off this weird. Yeah, it's so weird. So weird. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I mean, with the when he says objectively bad, I don't think there is such thing. Well, there are there is such thing as a bad movie. But if you talk about it and you get some sort of like entertainment, even if you're just taking a shit all over it, th- I think it served its purpose in regards to entertain you. Yeah. If you have an emotional reaction to it, I think as an artist. I don't know. The artist wins. If my emotional reaction is, I just wasted that fucking ninety minutes of my life. That's the worst. Yeah, like it's objectively bad. But if you're with buddies and you talk about just all the bad things in it, now if it does, if it is just like one of those, like, oh, that was awful, and you don't talk about it again, yeah, then it fails. I went and saw the creator recently. Okay. Um, So it's like an AI AI robot. Yeah, AI robot movie. It's like pretty new. Um, I'm pretty sure the main character is uh, Denzel Washington's son. I can't remember his name. Okay. Uh, Something Washington. Obviously, <laughs> um, I went. Probably. And, I was gonna yeah, say, pro- checks yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, I went and watched it with Regina and her husband. We we went and checked it out, and um, the whole movie, there's like nothing nice that happens. Like from the moment the movie starts, it's just sad. It's just sad, like dark. chaos, dark war, fighting. There's there's never a moment of like emotional relief. Huh. It's like that's tough. Just the whole that's thing. Uh. We, we we left it, and it's like. Fuck. Wow, that's like, heavy. Like shit. Yeah, <laughs> and like the movie opens up right, and it's like there was a nuclear bomb that went off in Los Angeles, and the humans are blaming the robots for doing it, and so now there's a war against robots, and literally like that's the frame that the movie starts in, and it the frame never gets better. It's just like war, heavy, fighting, heavy, death, heavy. heavy. Uh, yeah, mm. and then they like they find out there's this super weapon, and the super weapon is like I don't know if I should give it away, but. It, it, anyways, it's spoiler like, alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about the creator. Spoiler. Okay, now no one can get mad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the they they basically there's this super weapon that the robots have created to kill all of humanity. This is what they say, right? So there's like all these special ops people that they're trying to find this special weapon so they could kill it and kill the robots before the humans get killed by the robots. Yeah, it's a race yeah. against time to destroy the. So weapon. they find the weapon. It's like a three year old kid. Like oh. this, this super. Super uh, AI robot that they made that looks like a human. So why is it the secret weapon then? Because as it gets older, its powers it's like transform to where it can like do anything. Oh. oh, and so they're like, you have to kill it. And then the guy's like, it's a fucking kid. I can't kill the kid. You know. And then it's not a kid. But, but is a it weapon. a kid or is it? <laughs> I don't know. You got to watch to find out. <laughs> okay, oh. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah. Dark, There's, dark, dark, heavy, heavy. Not, I don't know. Not my. T- my the, cup those of tea. you get no hard. emotional relief in that yeah. movie. And at the end, it's like not even happy <coughs> at the end. Yeah. So it's just like, damn, you could have at least changed a couple things at the end so that they live happily ever after. A little I, positive. I feel endings, good that the, okay. Yeah. They accomplished. They won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All is good. There's a there's a movie called What Dreams May Come. I I don't know if you guys see. It. It's a Robin Williams movie, older okay. movie. Um, but that's one of those movies where it just hits you hard non-stop the whole time it's a it's kind of an interesting take on what the afterlife might be like but yeah it just hits you really dark and hard the whole time it deals with suicide death families yeah. getting torn apart He's exhausted it's, it's, when you get done watching crazy. it is it's like but draining. at the end there is this they do like there is this uplifting moment at the end but i talked to my wife about it to have and 
We're like, we can only watch that movie like once every four years because it is so emotionally draining yeah. and heavy. I feel like you're you get in if you get invested into a character, you want to see the character arc. You want to see the yeah. transition. You yeah, want to see, see the, the hero, the hero's yeah. journey. And man, if you don't get that, bullshit. Yeah. Fail. Fail. It is, it is fail. Unless it's like a horror movie where you expect the hero to just like not yeah. come out on top. But yeah, it is really unsatisfying when like Very the main character that you're like, oh, I really want this to work out. And then it does. You're like, oh, screw you. You know what's not emotionally exhausting? What? The do better do to the week. You're right. Do better do the week. Not. That's the pickup we need. That's the yeah. pickup. We Perfect timing. All right, guys, if you're tuning in, the do better dude is somebody we find out in the world that's just doing good, positive shit. Because as we were just talking about, there's a lot of negative shit in the world. And we like to highlight somebody that's got good values and standards, being a positive influence in the world, and just give them a little shout out. So, JR? Unlike shitty movies that don't give you a happy ending, we're going to give you a happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> get, get ready for the best happy ending you've ever had in your life. <laughs> And JR is going to deliver it. JR is going to deliver it right now. <laughs> I'm going I'm to give you your happy ending. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, this actually, th this this is very fitting for what we just talked about. All right, uh, we got a we got a hero here who dealt with some serious things in his life, and he had a heroic moment, a moment of redemption, of reform. Uh, let me pull up the story real quick. So this happened in Texas, November twentieth. 2023, Texas, around Houston, John Lally, on his third gravel delivery of the day, Saturday morning, he saw flashing police lights. Now, John Lally, just a little bit of background about him. He is an ex-con. He, he dealt with a lot of things. I don't want to, I don't want to dive into his past too much because he's our hero of this story. Jumping into action, but he's had run-ins with the police before, and as he's in his truck with this big trailer behind him, he sees uh, the police lights are up there. They were chasing someone who had stolen a car. Okay. And the car got in a wreck in the middle of the freeway, and the cops stop their cars, they get out, and the person opens, or the person who stole the car opens fire, and he ends up shooting one of the officers in the leg. The officer... Didn't get, like, mortally wounded or anything like that. He, he's shot in the leg, but he's down on the ground. John Lally gets out of his car and starts recording everything and documenting it. Um, the reason he, he says that he was documenting it was so he could explain to his boss why he was going to be late to work for his delivery. Because <laughs> he, he's worried about that. But then when he sees the police officers. Yeah, the significance of it, yeah. Yeah. So his phone is, like. His phone's, like, in his hand the whole time going around. Like, you can tell he's, it's really just, like, it's just there to, like, kind of document what's happening. He's not happening. framing it perfectly. Yeah. Like, okay. So it, it's a messy video. Okay. It's there. I'll make sure to post it in the links there so you guys can check out. It's it's really crazy. Uh, so he's walking around his truck. He's hiding behind it. He sees the officer go down. And he goes up there, and with another police officer, in the middle of, like, all the fire exchange going on, he grabs the officer who's injured and they drag him back by his truck and they throw him like under just to like give him coverage to keep him from getting shot again. But this guy who was an ex-con dealing with police officers, he went away to prison and jail for a number of years and all that. He sees these officers in trouble and he steps up and he goes into action. In the middle of all the gunfire, like he's not wearing a bulletproof vest. He's got a truck with gravel that's the only cover. He leaves his cover to go help the cop right. that got shot. And they drag him back. And uh, the interesting thing about it uh, that I wanted to bring up is there was a quote. So the Houston Police Department police chief, Troy Finner, says, uh, had this to say about him. He said, people make mistakes, but a truly reformed individual is a person that we can use. And he stepped up and other citizens stepped up. And I don't want that to get lost. It'll be a time that we'll acknowledge him formally, said Finner. So he knew about this guy's past mm -hmm. and everything. And he acknowledged that, like, this man who's reformed is truly reformed. He came and he helped out. And so I think this is a great example of like someone who turned their life around and did yeah. something better for themselves. Yeah. yeah it's uh, I mean, your past doesn't necessarily predict the future, right? Like who he was in the previous version of his life made some mistakes. It sounds like, but he learned from him. Yeah. This he, is a guy that could have just sat there and like watched yeah. it happen. And then, you know, just Which, like, when there's gunfire could be a totally, you know, okay stance for a lot of people, but for him to step up and help and yeah. 
admirable. Yeah. It's amazing. He also said that he's been shot before, too, and he was there comforting the officer as well. He's like, been there, you're going to be okay, buddy. It's all right. It's all good. You can hear <laughs> it on the video. Just a flesh wound, man. Flesh wound, you're, you're fine, man. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to die. <laughs> I got you, brother. <laughs> I think what's amazing about that story is just the willingness to help in a life or death situation. Yeah. You know, I think um, it takes a special individual that's willing to put themselves in harm's way to serve and help someone else. And those are the stories that, you know, we all hear and they're just so inspiring because yeah. we want to believe that if we were in that situation, we would do something as well. And um, when we see someone that actually does answer the call, it's really powerful. So the past is the past. It's like, you know, that doesn't predict the future. And I love the fact that he had the courage to step into action and support someone and, and help, uh, help in whatever way he could. Yeah, yeah really. I also want to call attention that John Lally also has a really great beard. Nice. He must use the beard. As he must. Guy, let's get that guy some product. Yep. Let's get this guy let's some, some hero some product. product. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Watch Top Secret. <laughs> <laughs> and go to livebearded.com. Check out the shit. If you like it, buy it. Yep. If not. If not, oh. that, that's okay. We love you anyways. You'll learn eventually. Yeah, you'll come around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Pleasure being with you today. Thanks for tuning in. If you've made it this far, that means we are... Uh, we're very grateful. Thank you. Yeah, we're yeah. very thank thank grateful. You. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. Be sure to like, comment, share, Subscribe, send it share everywhere. It's super helpful. Oh, and if you have questions, be sure to email us at askatlivebearded.com or put it in the comments below. Awesome. As always, Live, live Bearded! bearded.